All right. Um, so we'll move on to the next and last talk of the session. This is by uh, Dr. Andy Huang. He's a, a postdoc from CCNY, and he's going to talk to us about some um, electric field modeling work that he's done in the lab of, uh, of Dr. Parra, of Dr. Lucas Parra. All right. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, morning, everyone. Um, so today, I'm going to talk about our recent work on, on the uh, validation for the uh, computational model for transcranial electrical stimulation. So um, let me ask you guys, have you guys ever heard of this transcranial electrical stimulation? Uh, raise your hands if you have. OK, almost half of the people. So basically, it's, like, uh, it's a um, neural modulation technique. Uh, that delivers very, very uh, weak current, no matter uh, alternating current or direct current to the brain. Um, so it's becoming very uh, more and more popular recently because uh, there are many uh, studies showing that it's uh, uh, beneficial for improving uh, cognitive functions and also can treat some neurological diseases. But uh, we still don't quite understand the underlying mechanism of this technique and uh, how to uh, exactly place the electrodes on the scalp surface so that we can uh, hit the uh, interest brain, brain regions. So basically, we're doing this uh, uh, mostly on, on, on the computational models. So we're using the uh, uh, model predictions to help us design the optimal uh, stimulation montage to uh, hit the interest brain regions. So right now, we have like very uh, sophisticated modeling techniques, like very complicated and advanced uh, software and toolboxes to do this. Um, but uh, the problem is not uh, even single one of these models have, has been validated uh, by uh, comparing to the uh, actual recordings inside the human brain. And previous recording efforts, um, they o they're only done uh, either in monkeys or on the uh, scalp surface of human heads, or even just ex vivo. And the other problem is uh, the conductivity values uh, used in the modern models. They're actually uh, measured ex vivo mostly and also under uh, frequency at, of at least 10 hertz. So uh, I actually, up to now, we have very um, little information about uh, the actual electric field achieved inside the human brain under the stimulation. We don't really know if the model is telling the truth about the uh, spatial distribution or the actual achieved magnitude of the field. And also, even in the model itself, well, there's still controversial issues like People have been arguing about should we model the skull as a, uh, multiple layers, including the bone marrow, or just a single layer. And um, the other problem is uh, should we include uh, the white matter anisotropy um, so that we can model the, the nerves and white matter tract. So this motivates us. Um, we need to do some real recording to um, test to test if the model we have is correct or not. And thanks to uh, Dr. Annie Liu and her team, at uh, uh, NYU School of Medicine. So we have access to uh, uh, almost 10 um, epilepsy patients under the uh, intracranial EEG monitoring. And each one of these patients have like uh, over 100 intracranial electrodes in, uh, implanted. So we just uh, we carried out uh, one hertz uh, transcranial alternating current stimulation on these patients. And we also built a uh, uh, very high detailed uh, computation models for all these subjects. And then once, when we, after we got the uh, recordings, we can compare recordings to uh, our models. And we can answer the first question um, we've been wondering, are these model predictions reliable? So uh, here's a short video about uh, the model and the recording. So you can see here, this is, uh, this is uh, the scalp. And you notice uh, uh, the stimulation is actually placed. The anode is uh, on the uh, forehead and the castle on the back of the head. And uh, then uh, here is the skull. You see this uh, cranial to me. So that's, that's for inserting the um, intracranial electrodes for recording. We also model the, uh, this uh, surgery stuff, like this little tube here to clean out the blood. And also this uh, um, tiny uh, uh, ground electrode for the reference. <coughs> And this is, uh, this is the CSF. You see these uh, green strips? That's the actual uh, uh, intracranial recording electrode strip. And this is a gray matter. 
and also the white matter. So this is a comparison between the recordings and also the model prediction, and they look pretty similar to each other. So, so if you plot the uh, model outputs uh, in the x-axis and the recording in the y-axis for all the recording electrodes, the first thing we found is uh, there's a very strong correlation between the model and the recording. So that's, a, that's a good news because um, the model is doing a pretty good job. Um, so you see the correlation is almost one for the voltage and uh, uh, almost 0.8 for the electric field. And this field is uh, the electric field projection along the direction of the uh, recording electro strip. So the model is doing a very good job for predicting the relative distribution patterns for the voltage and the field. And the other interesting thing is uh, if you uh, use the uh, literature connective values in the model, the model always end up uh, overestimating the absolute magnitude for both the voltage and the uh, electric field. As uh, you can see uh, by this, the slope of this green line here, so basically the recording is the 70% of the uh, model and for the voltage and 50% of the model for the electric field. So something must be wrong with the literature connective values because as I said before, it's recorded, uh, it's measured um, under frequency higher than 10 hertz and our recording is done uh, only f under frequency of one hertz. So we're trying to adjust that conductivity value to make the model match the data as close as possible. And after that, we got the slope right, and slope of one, and the correlation is still pretty strong. And if, you, if we pull all the data from all the subjects together, you're gonna find a very strong correlation um, between, model and between model and recording for the electrodes, both in, on the cortex and also the depth electrode, because we also insert the depth electrode into uh, the, the lower temporal area, basically the hippocampus. So these are all very uh, excited results because uh, our model is actually working. And this is a summary figure here. So basically we were trying to find out how different uh, conductivity values affect the model predictions. So you can actually see um, the different conductivity values like uh, uh, literature conductivity, the optimal adjusted conductivity and the median value of those optimal value. They don't quite uh, affect how the model predicts the relative distribution of the voltage and electric field. Um, as you can see f uh, in panel A and B. From panel C and D, you, you, can, you can see the, um, what the literature, uh, what the conductivity value affect is how the model predicts the absolute magnitude of the voltage and field. And actually the median value of the optimally uh, obtained conductivity they did a better job than using the literature connectivity. And also this optimal connectivity, they, it varies across different subjects, as you can see um, from the last three panels. So here, um, like different symbol means uh, different subjects. So the optimal values is different. It makes sense because uh, it's different subjects has different uh, individual anatomy. So this is captured by this uh, um, optimal connectivity value. And the second question we can answer using the recording data is um, can the transcranial electrical stimulation achieve one volt per meter in the brain as suggested by previous modeling studies? And the answer is simply no. Because after we calibrate the model using the recording data, we can plot uh, the entire electric field magnitude distribution inside the head, inside the brain actually. And actually you can see from here that um, the maximum value that can be achieved is only 0.2 volt per meter under one mean ampere stimulation, or 0.4 volt per meter under two mean ampere stimulation. So this is basically um, a fewer than half of the previous modeling study suggested. So uh, the other thing we found out is um, actually in the deep brain structures, like uh, in the ventricles and uh, some lower uh, deep structure, the electric field can also achieve as high as 0.1 volt per meter. Like you can see here, this is a graph of the uh, electric field as a function of the distance to the brain, to the brain center. So basically here, this, this is maximum is the cortex. So on the cortex, you get the maximum electric field. 
but also in some deep area, you got a field as high as 0.1 volt per meter. So this is a pretty um, surprising because previously by the modeling study we we thought the current is shunted by the CSF, so very few current will enter the uh, deep brain. But actually, as suggested by this calibrated model, we found in the uh, deep brain we still get a pretty high electric field. Um, like you can see those hotspot here. Um, that's um, the the area where uh, the electric field is achieved to 0.1 volt per meter. And the last question we can uh, answer is based on the recording data is uh, all these controversial issue in the uh, modeling uh, process. Because we have, we have this uh, um, uh, recording data, we can use it as a ground truth to test the different modeling parameters. Uh, like, uh, should, I, should we model different skull compartments or should we model the wire anisotropy? So we basically uh, we we built different categories of models, um, like models including the CSF or uh, without the CSF, and models uh, that's cut off around the nose because uh, most of clinical MI scan is just cut off around the nose, and uh, models that are uh, covering the entire head, and we also uh, built models um, with uh, a single narrow uh, skull and. Uh, models with uh, multiple skull layers, including the bone marrow. And we also build models with and without wet matter anisotropy. And then we just test different category of these models to uh, uh, using the um, recorded data. And we found it's very important to uh, uh, include the CSF and the uh, um, entire head in your model. But um, it actually uh, uh, not that important to model the skull as different layers or including the wet matter anisotropy. So this is like a basic guideline for future uh, uh, modeling uh, attempts. And um, so these are uh, the, some uh, take home messages. So the good news is our model is uh, doing a very good job in predicting the uh, uh, relative distribution of the electric field. But it, it always, always estimates the actual magnitude of the field if you use an iteration connectivity. And, um, the uh, maximal electric field achieved inside the brain cannot be as high as one volt per meter as suggested by previous modeling study. It's just half of that. And um, it actually is not that important to model uh, the uh, white man isotopy or skull compartments, but it's uh, very important to include the CSF and cover the entire head. So we made the data online, so in the future people can just use it to uh, uh, to test their uh, new modeling techniques. And here I want to uh, thank uh, uh, Dr. Annie Liu and her team at NYU School of Medicine and all the colleagues at City College of New York and Mayo Clinic. So I think now it's for question. Yeah, that's a good question because uh, uh, right now the uh, um, because most of our configuration is from front to back. But we also, on one subject, we tested uh, some other uh, configuration, like uh, the, the anode is like uh, on the left frontal and castle on the mass story. And uh, we got similar results. But the, the optimal connectivity is a little bit different. So we don't, we, we, we don't uh, have to treat the optimal connectivity very seriously because it's not, uh, um, it's not actually the, the physical. Connectivity is just uh, from the computational uh, approach, but we, we what we learn from this is uh, we we cannot uh, fully trust the literature values, and um, actually the the actual connectivity it varies uh, uh, across subjects because it's determined by the uh, individual anatomy, and also it's also aff uh, affected by this configuration. So like in the future, if you um, um, if you're uh, doing uh, stimulation also following this configuration, you can uh, basically use this optimal connectivity. So yeah, that's the thing. I don't think so because this model is like a microscopic model, um, like a volume conductor model. So only the um, uh, electric, electromagnetic part affects the result of the model. I think what you're talking about relates to the, uh, um, the like a very microscopic level model, like a model for the neuron, like how TDCs works in a 
microscopic level. So if you build a model for that, uh, like, uh, like we're doing slice work, uh, trying to model how uh, TDCs affect the, the network mechanism, and that, that will matter. But for this, I don't think so. I'd like to give you this uh, recognition certificate uh, for being chosen as our uh, speaker for the neuro session. Um, so thank you very much, everybody. For